Apple's current iPad Mini 6 has been out for over two and a half years, and it's still by far my favorite iPad for a couple of reasons that I'm gonna explain in this video, which makes me so excited for the iPad Mini 7 Pro that Apple is working on right now. So in this video, I'm gonna answer every possible question you have about it, as well as sharing the top five major changes that we can expect. Now, the biggest reason why I think the iPad Mini 7 Pro is gonna be so special is that the current one is just so amazing. I bought mine back in 2022 when I was able to convince my wife we needed an iPad for the family, being the perfect size for my son to easily hold and watch things like Baby Shark on repeat. But now that my son is four years old, he's actually been using it to play educational games, like let's say painting or learning his alphabet. And my other son is now two years old and obsessed with monster trucks. So sometimes I'll turn on some truck videos for him on the tablet and even he can easily navigate and use it holding the mini. And of course I can use it for everything from browsing the web to playing modern games like Call of Duty Warzone. However, there are a couple of problems with the current Mini 6, so let's jump over to the upcoming Mini 7 Pro and the top five major changes. For change number one, Apple is expected to fix the issue that caused so much annoyance for users of the current Mini, which is the jelly scrolling flaw. If you didn't already know what it is, you can see what I'm talking about in this slow motion video where you can see that when you scroll up and down in portrait mode, it looks like there's a jelly effect where it doesn't scroll evenly across the display. This is caused by the fact that LCD screens refresh line by line, so sometimes there is a delay between the frames on both sides of the iPad, and it's much more noticeable on small displays like the Mini. But thankfully, a Weibo leaker called Instant Digital claims that Apple is gonna rotate the screen assembly on the iPad Mini so that this jello effect completely goes away, leading to a much better experience for users who scroll in portrait mode. Now, as far as rumors of it getting an OLED display, it unfortunately won't because of a recent leak from now deleted Twitter account Tech Reeve, revealing Apple's major product feature plans for the next few years, which includes the OLED iPad mini coming in 2026. And this actually matches an OLED roadmap prediction chart from Omdia, which once again included the OLED iPad mini, also in 2026, so don't get your hopes up about that. Now getting into major change number two, we have the chip, which is gonna be a huge deal because the current Mini 6 comes with the A15 chip from the iPhone 13 in 2021, and it's pretty clear that it's getting outdated when you look at the performance scores. But first, I wanna show you this. It's the new Wave Electric Toothbrush from our sponsor, Lifen, which quite literally brushes my teeth better than any other toothbrush I've ever tried due to some impressive new tech while having an elegant and high quality design for an unbeatable price. Now, if Apple made a toothbrush, this would be it because if you just take one look at the packaging, it's pretty clear that it uses literally the same boxes that Apple does. But the biggest breakthrough is their combined 60 degree oscillation and vibration brushing technique, which is recommended by dentists. Lifen uses a new servo system with a powerful 6 watt motor, giving you consistent brushing power unlike brands like these $300 Oral-B and Philips toothbrushes with only 2 watt motors. But at the same time, the Wave is also very gentle on your gums because it combines the strong cleaning power and oscillation insulation with soft bristles, which has been incredible over the past few months compared to our recent San Diego trip when I forgot my wave and had to use a manual brush that was harsh on my gums. It's got a very high quality IPX7 waterproof design that's clean and simple with no gaps for gunk to end up in, as well as its cool magnetic fast charging feature in just two and a half hours. You can easily switch between fully customizable modes using its pressure sensitive button, which you can hold for two seconds to enter flight mode. And the best part is the affordable price of only $69 for the Wave toothbrush and only $10 for a three pack of new brush heads. And you can check it out using the link in the description below. Now getting back to the iPad mini's performance, the single 
critical performance of the A17 Pro chip is 25% faster than this A15, as well as a 28.5% boost in multi-core for productivity apps and mobile game performance, and finally a huge 33.7% improvement in graphics performance. And not only that, but the A17 Pro comes with a bunch of new features like ray tracing support, metal FX upscaling, and support for AAA games. But guess what? I don't actually think that the new iPad Mini 7 Pro is coming with the A17 Pro chip at all, because honestly, I think it'll come with the brand new A18 Pro on the new N3e process node, including all of the major AI features that we're expecting. And this is a really big deal because TSMC's N3e node has a brand new lithography, which is gonna require a full redesign. And because of that, I believe Apple will create two chips, the A18 and the A18 Pro, which will have a brand new eight core CPU layout with six efficiency cores for the first time, as well as six GPU cores. And yes, I think the A18 Pro version is gonna go into the iPad mini 7 Pro. And why? Well, because in 2021, Apple gave the same exact five core GPU version of the new A15 chip to both the new Pro model iPhones and the iPad mini at the same time, while many people thought it would be getting the old A14 chip. And we just got a leak from Mark Gurman saying that we shouldn't expect this new iPad mini until at least early next year, which pretty much guarantees it'll come with the A18 Pro chip. And because of the new A18 Pro being fully redesigned with more cores, we're expecting a huge performance jump, which we actually saw in recent leaks that also came from TechReve on Twitter, revealing a massive jump in performance. Looking at single core performance numbers, the A18 Pro is looking to be 55% faster than the A15 chip, which is massive. But keep in mind that these leaked numbers are from a prototype iPhone that likely isn't limited by thermals, so the final scores could be a little bit lower when it actually launches. But moving over to multi-core performance, the A18 Pro is 65% faster, which is just insane. And finally, Graphics performance is gonna be literally over twice as fast in terms of FPS, which is mind boggling, ensuring that you can play pretty much any game at perfect 60 FPS. So just by looking at those performance improvements, you can see why we're all calling the iPad mini 7 the pro model and why so many people are waiting for it. And with that said, let's jump into major change number three. Even though the cameras in the current iPad mini are fairly modern with 12 megapixel sensors for both the front and the back cameras, it has definitely been a long time since this iPad came out, so we can easily expect Apple to upgrade the internal camera sensors to more modern versions. Now, I'm not sure if they'll actually give it a new 48 megapixel sensor because we don't even have that in the other iPads, but the new sensors will definitely improve the quality. Now, we are expecting land landscape cameras to come to both the iPad Pro and the iPad Air models this year, but I personally wouldn't expect that on the mini because it's so small that it doesn't support keyboards with the smart connector, so it's really meant to be used in your hands, mostly in portrait mode. Now getting into major change number four, the new iPad mini 7 is gonna come with a bunch of internal upgrades that we've been seeing on recent iPads and other devices over the last couple of years, while the mini has been missing out. For example, we should 100% expect Apple to bring Wi-Fi 6E and Bluetooth 5.3 at the minimum, as well as possibly some updates to the speakers or the microphone quality. But other than that, we shouldn't expect anything else on the inside and definitely not Face ID support as that will remain exclusive to the iPad Pros for the time being. And finally, for change number five, we should definitely expect the iPad mini 7 Pro to gain support for the new Apple Pencil 3 that's rumored to be launching with the upcoming iPad Pro in just a month or two. This new Apple Pencil is rumored to come with a new design, possibly being shorter and having an updated texture, 
and it's also gonna come with interchangeable magnetic tips, so you can swap out different tools and sizes for fine-tuning your art and notes. And other than that, it's also rumored to come with a brand new squeeze feature that we don't have on the current Pencil 2. So with that said, hopefully you enjoyed this video, and if you did, go ahead and click that circle above to subscribe for more videos like this one. Check out one of those two right over there. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.